guys, how's it going? We're down here at the shop, um, working on this, this six liter here. It's my brother's truck. We did a high pressure oil pump in it yesterday. Um, I forgot to film that for you guys, but uh, put a pump in it. <clears throat> and uh, it was building like, oh, I, prior with the old pump, the old bull pump was building maybe 150 PSI oil pressure. Um, and uh, uh, we, uh, Throw a pump in it and went to go start it yesterday and watch, watching the watching the oil pressure it jumped up to about 400 450 almost immediately as soon as it had oil to the pump obviously but almost immediately jumped up to like 4 450 um and then shot straight back down it was like 250 300 in that range and um so uh, obviously it should make more than that. Um, I mean, it needs to make about 500 just for it to start. So I tore the, tore back into it and did a pressure test on the high pressure oil system. Um, there's only, uh, realistically, there's only about three or four things that will cause one of these trucks to, uh, uh, to not build high pressure oil. And, uh, one of them being the high pressure oil pump and then IPR valve uh, lack of feed oil to the pump. Um, so your low pressure system and then a massive high pressure oil system leak. Um, and that's what this thing ended up having was is a big high pressure oil system leak. Um, so this O-ring right here, if you can really see that, O-ring's all blown out. This, this little piece here, that's supposed to be one piece. And then the, this is the retaining ring. So this is like in the top of the injector, basically that sits sits on top of it like that. And then this retaining ring here sits on top of it and keeps it all in. Um, it, uh, I know I'm doing a terrible job of filming here, guys. I'm doing my best. So all that stuff goes down in the top of the injector. And if you can see right here, there's a chunk of the top of the injector that's broken. So it's had a um, kind of an ongoing running issue um, for a few months now. Um, and my feeling is, is that the, the high pressure oil pump was going bad for a while. It was starting to get weak. He wasn't monitoring ICP. Um, which, you know, whatever, no one usually, well, I shouldn't say no one, few people do, um, but, uh, uh, but yeah, so he wasn't monitoring ICP, and he dropped it off with me, and um, said, because he said it had an idling issue, he said, he said it would idle for, uh, it would idle for, like, you know, 10 minutes or something like that, and then, um, and then it would start doing this weird low idle. Um, so the engine would get really quiet and then it would idle at like, you know, 450, 500 RPMs and you blur up the throttle and it would go back to normal. And uh, so he dropped it off with me. I let it run for, shit, shit I probably did three hours of idle time. I went and drove it, let it idle some more. Thing ran perfect, no issues. I didn't think to monitor. It wasn't doing anything weird, so I wasn't distinctly monitoring ICP. So um, we did actually recently tune the truck too, so I'm sure that didn't help either. Um, so anyway, so we got uh, uh, got the new pump put in it, and like I said, I think that that's, this happened afterwards i my my assumption would be is that the top of the injector probably was slightly broken or that piece was broken before or something like that or maybe this was an issue already um and then but it just wasn't showing up and then because uh, like i say it didn't build over i mean you were lucky to get 150 psi oil pressure out of it um uh with the old pump and the old pump you can spin it very freely which if any of you guys have ever spun a six liter high pressure oil pump, um, a good one, they have a decent amount of resistance and you can kind of feel the parts moving around inside the pump um, as you're turning the gear on it. Whereas this old one, it basically spun free. Like there was no resistance from any parts inside of it. You couldn't feel any of the parts turning or moving around in there. So 
Um, See, so anyways, so uh, it 100% had a bad high pressure oil pump because it made more, even with this o ring blown out, it made more high pressure oil pressure than it did um, with the oil pump, uh, even though it didn't start. So, anyways, so we are, we got a new, new, new Ford injector for it. Um, and that's what we're in the process of doing. We've got the, um, we got the red Dodge inside. Um, hopefully the, I think, yeah, I think she's working. Yeah, I think she's working on getting the video posted with all the updates on the shop and everything like that. Um, but uh, we had to get that, that's a story in itself. Um, they're paving the parking lot here at the shop complex. And I left work early tomorrow, or tomorrow, yesterday. Um, uh, because the paving, the dude who owns the paving company was threatening to move this truck because it was in the way of his paving. And I'm like, like hell you are. Well, the problem was, is I couldn't talk with him directly. Um, I was just hearing it from a friend of mine that has a shop here too. Um, and uh, I was just hearing it from him. And then I talked to the landlord and the landlord was like, oh, calm him down. And it's like, so what am I supposed to just go under the assumption that this guy isn't gonna come touch a customer's truck like it's not happening. But anyways, so they were supposed to pay it today. So I left work, yeah, I left work early yesterday um, and came down here and then they're like, oh yeah, we're not gonna pave it today because blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay. So then I get, I get, got everything moved around. We were trying to get my brother's truck done yesterday so we could just pull this red truck inside, no issues. So we ended up having to move my brother's truck around because it was parked where the red truck is. And, uh, and up having to move it around with floor jack and all that crap to get it over there in the corner and then pull the red truck in. And then I get here today and they didn't even pave it. So supposedly because it started sprinkling or something and whatever. Um, so the other thing, I'll give you guys a, again, sorry about the uh, terrible camera ing here. There, oh, there, oh yeah, there it is. Um, as you can see, the engine for the service truck is um, not on the stand anymore. See if I can find some place to. There we go. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Um, he finally took it. He finally got his got the rest of his engine kit in, um, and he took it down to the machine shop uh, to get all the machine work done on it. We should hopefully see it by middle or end of next week, I would say, so we can put start putting that together. Again, he doesn't like to be on camera, um, which I like say I don't blame him. You know, it is a little weird to be on camera, um, but uh, so you guys won't get like progress videos like as we're doing it but i'll update you through the process when he's not here so that way he doesn't he's whatever um so anyways well i'm gonna get cruising here on this we need to get it done so i'll uh, i'll as the process goes on I, i'm gonna try and get i'm gonna probably try and go get go down and get a new phone here before too long so so i don't because literally all of the uh all of the videos are done off the forward facing camera. So it's kind of a pain to see where you're pointing the camera um, to show you guys stuff. So if you haven't seen, where are we at here? There we are. If you haven't seen the underside of the valve cover on a six liter, hopefully you can kind of see that. I won't know if you guys are actually seeing that before. Um, or, you know, unless I watch the video, so. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and get this injector thrown in and cross our fingers that it doesn't have another one that's like that too or any other issues. This truck has been amazing. He bought this truck in 2016, I think, um, and uh, has 134,000 or something like that on it now. He bought it with 74, I wanna say. It's either 74 or 84, I wanna, I don't know, somewhere out of there. Um, and it's been a great truck. I and mean, it's been amazing. He's hardly had to do anything. So we did head gaskets and stuff on it, obviously, because you have to do that. But um, he drove it for quite a while with both head gaskets and, and uh, the truck ran great, never gave him any issues. He's never really had any, I think he's had to put an IPR valve on it and that's it. Um, no injectors, no nothing else. Just IPR valve did head gaskets, that's it. So anyways, guys, well, I'm gonna get to it. I'll uh, update you along later. So we are back here working on this thing. Um, it's been about a week since I picked up the camera last. There hasn't been really anything to show you guys or tell you guys. Um, I'll try and keep this short so we're not talking about it too long. 
uh, essentially a brief kind of rundown of what's been going on. It's had a high pressure oil system leak. It developed it after I put the pump in. Uh, chased, chased our tails, chased our tails, chased our tails, chased our tails, trying to figure out what the hell was going on. And it finally ended up making this tool. Basically the leak was coming from down low. Um, and so it's basically, it'll resonate across the, across the back of the engine. So if you're listening to it through the valve cover, it's gonna, it's gonna be very muffled and sound like it's coming, it, it, it sounds like it comes from everywhere. Like there's no distinct one place that it comes from like it is when it's, when it's in the, the head. So, um, but it also kind of seemed like it could be a uh, high pressure oil rail leak. So we decided we wanted to remove that high pressure oil rail completely out of the equation by building this. And all this is, is the bottom half of a standpipe with a bolt welded in it. And I basically took a, I made a tab that bolted on one of the rocker arm pedestal bolts and just to hold that in so it didn't go rocketing across the shop into the wall or my head or, you know, wherever. Uh, so, and that worked perfect because we were able to 100% positively figure out that there was no leaks in the high pressure oil rail and that the leaks were coming from down in the high pressure oil pump area. Basically what I did was I took the rail off, stuffed this in there, put air to it, and it was obviously still leaking. So I popped the driver's side valve cover off just to verify that there was no leaks coming from there. No leaks coming from there. So I pulled the high pressure oil pump cover off and pressurized through the nipple on the top of the J-tube. And there was air coming out of there. Stuck my hand back around the kind of, kind of around the branch tube in the back and by the pump gear and stuff. And I felt air back there. So I started feeling around some more and it's really hard to hold that the air nozzle on there like somewhat airtight and be able to stick your hand back there. So I actually had a buddy of mine get up there, stick his hand back there, said, yep, yeah, 100% there's air coming from that, around that shaft on the pump. Sorry if you guys can hear that, they're paving the parking lot behind the shop. Uh, so we took the pump out of the truck, put it on the bench, pressure tested it on the bench, blowing air straight out that seal. Uh, I called the company that manufactures the pump. They said, uh, yeah, that's normal. I'm like, well, I don't think that's normal, but okay, I'll humor you. Uh, went through and did some more diagnosing on it. I took another good used pump that I had sitting here on the shelf. Well, good used, it, it worked good when it came off the last truck. Um, and I did all the same testing on it with air and it didn't do anything that this aftermarket pump did. So I put it on the truck, pressure tested it on the truck, no leaks. So. I'm putting the truck together right now with this used pump just so I can move it around. He may, again, it's my brother. So if this were a customer, I'd never send this out the door, but it's my brother. So, you know, whatever. Um, so he may come and pick it up and drive it. Well, cause it's gonna take probably a week and a half, two weeks to get this, get this uh, new pump fixed and back to us. So he may come pick it up, take it. Either way, I need it to be movable so I can move it out of this spot because I have another project that needs to go in this spot and it's really a pain to have it where it is and unmovable. So um, yeah, so that's where we're at with that. I don't know, at least for the time being, how much more I'm gonna show you of it because it's kind of pointless. It's all just mindless, you know, putting stuff back together um, and then taking it back apart again. I might, if I have my new phone by then, I, I'm, I'm Recording this on my phone, which I dropped uh, when I was getting out of the pickup a couple months ago, um, I dropped it on its screen in the gravel, and it somehow didn't break the screen, but it broke the forward-facing camera. Uh, so I can't record with the forward-facing camera. We'll throw a picture in of what it looks like when I take a picture. Um, but uh, So I can't record with the forward-facing camera, but hopefully I'll be going and getting a new phone in the next couple days, and then I can. So what I might do is when I go to change the pump out, for the new one, when it comes back in a couple weeks, I might uh, uh, do a time lapse of that, um, just to kind of show you guys what it takes to, to do that. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, we got a bunch of stuff coming and going. I'm hoping to get my phone, get a new phone here in the next couple days. There's a lot of stuff that I'd like to be recording that I've been missing because I can't just whip my phone out and record it. Um, a buddy of mine over here, he's putting in a dyno in his shop. So there's gonna be a lot of cool videos with that. Uh, we got a lot of other stuff going, along, going on around here. So hopefully uh, we'll be able to get you guys some good content here before too long. All right, you guys have a good one.